Hey. Hey, what are we doing? Picking peppers. Why are we going this way? I just need to check on something first. Check your what? I just need to check on something. That rooster, I asked for help naming him. Well, I got a lot of really good suggestions. It actually made it harder because there were so many good ideas that it's hard to choose. Some of my favorites were Elvis because he's wearing a white jumpsuit with bell bottoms. Mm. Pretty good. Um, someone said John Travolta for the same reason. Um, but I really like Salvatore. Why that? Because I called him Saboteur and several people suggested Salvatore, so I think that's what we should name him. Yeah, it, it started ripening some really small melons because the plant got sick. Mm -hmm. So we did get one, but it was really mushy. It wasn't quite right. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get very many Kajari melons this year. They're supposed to be a little bit bigger than this. Um, this just started ripening this before it was ready. We just got a lot of rain. I'd like to know how much rain we just got. Salvatore, you saboteur. <laughs> Look at him, like a little dinosaur. Holy smokes. Wow. I knew that was a lot of rain because it was backing up in front of the basement. That was three inches. Yeah, it is. It rained really, really heavy this afternoon. It just started and didn't stop and came down so hard. It's three inches in an afternoon. That's a lot. We looked out here and the ducks were splashing around. Don't let him pass me. Yeah, the ducks are like ridiculously happy right now and the geese, <laughs> look at that. That goose is like mine. <laughs> So we're gonna go pick peppers in the back. But first, I wanted to come down here to see how much rain we got. And also, I have to do something that I said I would do. This is the most majestic spinach. It is really lovely, isn't it? it makes me feel like, I feel, honestly, when I look at it, I think medieval. Medieval? I don't know why. <laughs> Like, this is like stuff out of like, of the rings, the way it grows. It is really pretty. I didn't know you felt so strongly about it. I do. Have you eaten it? Yes. That does not make me feel like that. <laughs> <That's really laughs> makes me feel like chewing up a really thick, dense plant. <laughs> so last night, my friend Tiff, she's been on the vlog before. She has a YouTube channel called Stead in the City. I think the last time she was on, when she, she had not launched her YouTube channel yet. I think she's I had referenced her Instagram. But she does have her YouTube channel now. Well, she texted me last night and said, hey, have you eaten the berries on the Malabar spinach? And I was like, no, I haven't. And, you know, she's like, I wanna try them, but I'm kinda nervous. And I was like, well, I mean, I'll do it if you'll do it. <laughs> and we Googled it first to make sure they weren't poisonous. I didn't think they would be, but you gotta double check these things. I made a bad choice. Why? I think this is gonna dye my skin. Oh, it definitely is. We should like, even if we don't eat these, we should like get it and dye some, like a shirt. A shirt? Are you gonna wear a shirt that's dyed with Malabar spinach berries? Yeah, we should call it the Malabar shirt. <laughs> Look at that. Look how bright that is. That is nuts. It's majestic. So anyway, Tiff messaged me her video last night of her trying the Malabar spinach berries. Now I wanna lick my finger. Do it. No, I have to hear how this goes first. <laughs> and I've gotta be a woman of my word, so. I'm gonna try them. In her video, she said they really didn't taste like much, so. They don't taste like anything. So they're really good for dying, then? Well, yeah. I mean, seriously, you could turn that into like a really powerful dye. Yeah, watch this, watch. Yeah, they don't taste like anything, but that's pretty intense, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely want to try to do some like art. Yeah, we should try that. They really didn't taste like anything. I guess it would have been funnier if they were like really good or really bad, but they just taste like nothing. I don't know what the benefit of eating them would be. Mm. That one tastes a little bit more like the leaves do. Kind of just mucilage, mucilagous, mucilage, mucilage, I don't know. What would be the right? <laughs> 
<laughs> Way to say that. Another thing you can use to dye stuff are these blue butterfly peas. You can use these to color, like you can cook rice in them and it turns blue. One last pretty sunflower. Look at that multi-headed one, isn't That's that awesome. neat? And the head on this one is huge. So is the stalk. I really like how this looks over here, Maya. The fence and everything? Yeah, this is beautiful. I don't know, we should close it so the goaties don't get out and eat up the greenhouse. Yeah. Hey girlies. We have gotten a lot of new subscribers since I've done much goat content because this year we didn't really, uh, we didn't really breed our goats. We didn't have a buck and then we got a buck, but it was kind of late and we sort of just decided to focus on the gardens this year. So I haven't been milking daily and with that being said, I haven't been doing a lot of goat content. But we do have goats, dairy goats. Um, and I realized we hadn't talked much about them the other day when somebody was asking about Nestle when I showed her. But these are three of our oldest goats that we've had the longest. This is Nestle and Mayhem and Miriam. As you can tell, they're sweet girls. They're used to being in our pocket. Very big personalities. These are all Nubians. You can tell by their long ears. And they are darlings, and we love them. Um, oh, yes. Mayhem has got a very classic Roman nose, which is a Nubian trait as well. Look at them. I love when they smile. And the buck that they've been in with is back in the barn. You can't see him from here. His name's Thorn Oak and Shield. He's very, he's very shy. He'll let us pet on him, but um, only when we're like hanging out like if we hang out out here he'll come up to us but not when we first walk out so we have some other goats back here this is ross poldark who is our male la mancha buck you can see he's kind of got some funky horns this is manny the alpaca who i guess decided to stand out in the rain instead yeah. of going to the barn yeah whenever we first got our farm stuff like that would stress me out whenever like my animals would be standing in the rain i'd be like what are you doing you don't need to be out there getting wet but now i've come to know that you know they're just gonna do what they're gonna do make your own choice he had a dry place to go he chose not to go to it uh this is a weather goat that came with our nigerian dwarf girls he's at some point gonna go live with my cousin but hasn't yet and then we have a couple of little nigerian dwarf boys and dr ennis our other la mancha buck he's up in the barn. Solitary. Yes. And we, it's not great to keep him alone, but he has been persistent. About getting out of stuff. Their milkshakes bringing him to the yard. Yeah. And he sprained his... He sprained his little leg. So he's, little leg. So he he's, in, he's in the hospital right now healing because he just had to get to the ladies and jump to fence. Which is unfortunate, but... That is goat ownership. Sometimes they make poor decisions. <laughs> All right. Well, it stormed like crazy today, but everything's fine in here. <laughs> I made a decision this morning. Oh, yeah? What's that? Um, I think we're going to tear out all the tomatoes on the back two rows. That's a lot of tomatoes. I make sure I get enough for all my salsa. Are you serious? This is the conversation we're having right now? You're worried about us not having enough tomatoes? I am. Actually, <laughs> I need to make enough salsa for a year. I have to make enough to get back to tomato season next year. The plants back here on the back side are really starting to get sick. Um, you can see here that's a branch just fell down, but there's just a lot of disease back here. I don't even really know what this is. I don't know, but this bed is the one that had so much blossom in rot and there's still a little bit of that. But then those back on that side are starting to get sick too. But they're still, I was thinking if we if pulled- these two front rows keep producing, I'll be able to get the salsa I need. I think and they... tomato sauce, like all the things that these great things make not raw. <laughs> all right, we need to what pick- What am I getting? We need to pick a lot of peppers that are ready. Sweet Maya just totally dropped a bomb on me. The bomb. I'm like, we're just sitting here pecking peppers. And he's like, oh, by the way, I got an email yesterday and our freeze dryer shipped. Well, it made me think of it was the peppers. What? That is too exciting! <laughs> I'm gonna freeze dry all the things. Guess what we learned. What? So guess what we learned. What? That our trellis method does not hurt. 
Oh yeah, that trellis method we did did not work. So I've been kind of putting off, just pulled a branch off of that. So I've been kind of putting off uh, preserving some of these peppers because I really wanted to freeze dry them. And I knew that was coming, but I wasn't 100% sure when. And Jeremiah just told me that it shipped. How exciting is that? I wanted to freeze dry a lot of our herbs and a lot of like, like I want to do these cayenne peppers and normally I would dehydrate them and then I would grind them down into a powder dehydrated, which is a viable option. Uh, you don't have to have a freeze dryer to make chili, uh, cayenne powder by any means. But I also wanted to try that and see if we liked that better to uh, freeze dry them and then grind that down into a powder. So it would be kind of more like a fresh powder. Now I guess I'll get to try it. Here we stick these in the basket. Yeah. I'm not sure what some of these are. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I made jambalaya for dinner though. And I cut up a bunch of peppers that we had in the house and I just bit the end off of them to make sure that I wasn't putting really hot peppers in. And I had one of these, whatever it is. Oh wow, this one's hot. <laughs> The end was so sweet. Oh God, it burns. Here, <laughs> you should try it. I don't, I don't like that much heat. It's not, it's not that hot. That's hot. It was kind of hot. No. It's burning my mouth. Oh, chili, chili mirasol. That's what that was. I bet you this one's hot. I'm not biting that. Look, there's a bunch of these here. I These know. chili. And we still haven't gotten past this plant over here. That's a wax pepper. You're definitely gonna have to help with the peppers next year. What do you mean? Look how many peppers I grew. Oh, that's not the problem. <laughs> um, identification for heat purposes, a trellising idea. Goodness, this plant is covered. <laughs> See, this is why I need more tomatoes. All this is gonna be salsa. <laughs> You're so, so salsa. Here, take these. Yeah, that's... well, my family visited and then sang my praises. They did? Yeah, everyone loved my hot salsa, the hot one. <laughs> so Maya's approach to making salsa is to do my recipe, but instead of using the like six to eight jalapenos that I use, he comes out here and just harvests like a basket full of random peppers and tastes them to see if they're hot enough and then goes and puts them in the salsa. It is amazing. Not even, we're not even halfway. <laughs> You're so pragmatic. Um, what does that mean? Uh, like, practical. Oh. You're so practical. Is that a compliment? Yeah. <laughs> oh, with your confidence, I'm so convinced. Though some of the sicky tomato plants may come out early to make room for winter things, I am going to leave this bed of peppers in until the frost. I want to let it grow and see how many we can get off of it. Look at this one. This is tasty. I'm eating this. What? It's a bell pepper? Yeah. It looks mm. like a brown one. It's just I starting used, to uh, turn. I used a yellow one on that not a pino mild salsa banana. Yeah. Mm, it was really good. I see all these peppers and I just think we should make some really good omelets. Oh, yes. Hey, Ezra. What's up, bro? Hey. Hey, do you like peppers? Mm. Ones that are, ones that are sweet. You do? And not spicy at all. Yeah, you don't like spicy food, do you? I feel like these pepper plants are planted too close together. I'm like <sighs> breaking plants just to get to the bottom of these other plants to get to the peppers. It's like snapping limbs and stuff. Hmm. I'm, I'm just taking notes. Interesting hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> I had never said that I was a pepper expert, but this- Anybody on YouTube is questioning what that actually means? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I look at this basket, I feel like it's saying to me, Jessica Zowers, you're great at growing peppers. <laughs> what do you think, sweet Maya? <laughs> I learned a long time ago never to question Jessica's inner thoughts about herself. <laughs> you are great at growing peppers. <laughs> 
They may be a little close together. However, they say peppers really like to hold hands, so you're actually supposed to plant them close together. I think if we had used like it's tomato like cages, I think we should use tomato cages I agree. next time to grow them in and just keep the plants upright. But technically, it's not a tomato cage, is it? Well, <laughs> I've always thought that tomato cages being sold as tomato cages is the dumbest thing. Hey, harvest these two. Yeah, yeah. Because seriously, like, I, I put my tomatoes in tomato cages the first year that I had a garden. But look at these. That plant, the top of that plant, is like, how tall is that, sweet Maya? It's like 14 feet up there. Of course, it's in a raised bed. Okay, it may only be like 12 feet. Well, I'm just Did y'all hear him? He said, did you figure out how many dads was in between it? The way I figure out the measurement of things is I know that my dad is six feet tall. Listen, don't question it because <laughs> I did once and she figured out that we needed a hundred foot of fence. <laughs> Based like, on how many dads. How many dads were in it and she was right. <laughs> so I just visually imagine how many times my dad could lay down in his space to figure out. <laughs> How much space it is and I think those tomato plants are two dads tall at least if we ever like build a house and like hire a contractor to build one because I don't know if that if I'm capable of all that like I'm gonna really make sure we pick the right one because Jessica will be like um I need a hallway it's gonna be like four dads <laughs> like two like one dad wide <laughs> one and a half dads wide by like 12 dads this way like all of our rooms are gonna be based off of dads it's a six dad by five dad square room <laughs> It's the perfect size for a master suite. <laughs> anyway, before we got sidetracked by the dad measurement, a tomato cage is really not great for most varieties of tomatoes. Maybe some determinate varieties that would actually offer support. But I just don't think that's the best way to trellis anything. But in tomatoes, I mean, they're just going to outgrow it. It's just not great. Now, you can make tomato cages out of fencing, and that works a little bit better if you're not pruning. But I really prefer fixing my tomatoes up on, like, a panel trellis or using string or something like that. However, if you have those tomato cages, they are really good for holding pepper plants because pepper plants, in a lot of cases, they don't get a lot taller than that, or if they do, they really just need some support to stay upright, and that kind of holds them all in together. I didn't want do it this year because I didn't want to buy this many tomato cages, but I'm going to keep my eye out for them. A lot of times people end up sticking those on the side of the road, and I will straight up start collecting tomato cages now because I think that would be a really good way to hold these pepper plants in these beds. And then we can call them pepper cages and they will actually have a good purpose that makes sense. And so, look at these, these are all red. Those, I think those may be the sugar rush peaches that I thought the others were. So they should turn like a peach color. Look, so this they're one. not ready? No, and they really like get a lot, they're hot, but they get a lot sweeter when they start to turn. Yeah, we need to figure out some way to support these. Look how loaded this jalapeno plant is. That's crazy. That is a ton of peppers on this plant. It does need some support though. Oh, hey Ben, check yeah. this out. Look at this basket of peppers. Spicy? Some. I'm the one that's not spicy. You out of breath? Yes. Okay. I'll share my big one with you, but please don't just lay it down. You can eat some of it, but take it in the house because I'll finish it. Okay? Try it. Is it spicy? No. Oh, Benjamin. <laughs> How is it? All right. Maybe you should go for a smaller bite next time. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a pretty good pepper haul. We didn't even finish, but our basket got full. We have a lot of jalapenos to pick. I didn't even focus on picking those because they still have some time that they can stay on there. But I really want to uh, just pick them all at once and do some candied jalapenos and then also pickle some. If y'all have any other great ways that you love to preserve jalapenos or any like kind of like semi hot peppers like that, please link them down below if you've got like links to blogs or vlogs or whatever if you just want to type a recipe out. I would love to know. Well guys, we are about to head back in our house. We still have family here this week. I'm gonna try to get Nana to do 
a vlog with me so you guys get to spend some more time with her and Poppy while they're still here. They're gonna be here for a little while, so we'll, we'll have some time. We're gonna keep them here as long as they are willing to stay because we're enjoying the time. But I appreciate y'all hanging out here with us tonight for just a little bit. I bless you, until next time.